So we're going to do a, a little blue yak miller, blue and white, uh, with a touch of chartreuse on there. Um, again, all out of yak, um, zero flash. Um, like I said, you can on the previous video you can you can add flash if you want, but um, I'm just going to do little little yak miller. So hook wise, <clears throat> same as before, SL12 4 you can do two O's, six O's, eight O's. You just have to scale up or scale down the material accordingly. Um, thread is a two ten Danville's flat waxed, um, um, and um, which I tend to like. Or you can use uni thread. Now yak is a nice natural fiber. This one in particular is a twelve to fourteen inch hank. Um, I'll be using white. Two different blues, chartreuse, and a bit of black. Um, so what I'm going to do on this one for the first cut is I'm actually just going to cut some short two and a half, three inch bundles, and I'm just going to put them down for the belly rather than picking up as I need. So that's a twelve inch piece cut down into two and a half, three inch pieces um, for, for the belly. Now to create the tail, again, don't need a lot of yak. A little bit goes a long way with yak. So this is only probably 25, 30 strands. We're gonna cut off, what's that? About five inches worth of yak. And because it's uh, the fiber is a pretty straight fiber, there's no natural taper. Um, you can take 12 inches, cut it down to how many um, inches you want into little hanks. So I'm just pulling out the tips to pre-taper it. So there's not that harsh cut off 90 degree angle. Um, again, this just helps speeds up the, the tying process because you don't have to spend ages trimming. Um, you, you don't need to pre-taper it. You can tie in whole hanks and then waste loads of materials by, by, by trimming it at the end. Um, but this just gives it more of a natural, the bait fish profile quicker. Um, sorry, let me just say, because um, I'm creating a tail here, the base of the tail, I'm tying in about 40% at the back here, so that's about three inches, about four inches at the top here, so it's about a seven inch hank, and then folding it back, so it's creating a the start of the taper. So just locking it down there with a couple of wraps and then using golf eco glue to uh, seal in the threads. It's slow drying. Um, I'm not affiliated with golf by the way, I just like that particular product. Um, it's slow drying and will soak into all the fibers quite nicely and down into that hook shank, which is pretty cool. I'm taking the other half of that hank of white that I cut, which is about, it's at about six inches now. I'm gonna taper it up to about eight. And again, because I want that teardrop, it was short at the bottom, longer on the top. This time I'm gonna be doing longer on the bottom of the tie, shorter towards the front. So again, it's just helping to build that taper. I'm also gonna take a couple of strands out of my little belly bundle. And I'm going to taper those as well up to about four inches. So it's two inches to the back, two inches to the front, kind of even tie. Spread it slightly around the hook shank with my fingers or my thumbnail, should I say. And then we're going to fold these back on themselves. And the reason why we're folding it back on itself is A, it builds a bit of volume, um, and B, it adds a lot of durability to these flies because unless the thread is cut, these materials will not pull out. Um, and even if the thread is cut, because we're sealing them in, it stays pretty durable. Obviously a wayward tooth would, uh, would do that. But as you can see by tapering those bundles as we tied in, we're already getting that kind of teardroppy shape. You can already see that there's going to be minimal need to 
um, trim this fly at the end. Still do a little bit of trimming, but not even 60 seconds really is all you need. Again, that's just a couple of bundles or a couple of fibers out of the uh, the belly bundles that I cut at first into those nice little easy to use strips. Right, next we're just going to take a bit of turquoise yak. Again, don't need a lot because we're going to take the 12 inches and we're going to double it over. Cut it so there's about 30 fibers there. I'm going to take a bit of white. Same amount, kind of 50-50 even. Then fold it in half, cut it. And what we're going to do is you've got your white and your blue. You're just going to blend it. Now the amount in my hand will be double what we tie in because I'm going to slit this bundle and I'm going to use it on the next tie in point as well. But actually, I'm going to blend it with some slightly darker blue on the next bundle. No, oh, sorry, not darker blue, some chartreuse. So that's nicely blended. Split the bundle. So, got about the same amount again. It's a bit long because it's kind of tapered already. So, I'm just going to trim that deck down to about five inches because that's all we need. And I'm going to lay it down again because we're getting that teardrop taper still, but it'll be deeper in the belly and uh, longer on the back. It'll still be slightly tapered as you can see. So that's all nicely locked down. I should say, like Bucktail, when you fold this back, you want to make sure that it's folded and pushed right up again get against that thread down that you tied it down with the locking threads because it creates a nice little even thing if not your fibers will tend to fold down on themselves as the bump is up it kind of pushes the fibers down and don't get the nice nice neat look right bring a thread forward we're just past the halfway point here now so again 20, 30 strands, 25 strands, tying 50, 50 front and back for the belly. Spread that back bit around the shank a little bit. Now, this is the mix of ta or blue and white, uh, or the turquoise and white. And I'm just going to take some chartreuse, about the same amount again. So it's the bundles were even, but it means it's 50% Chartreuse, 25% turquoise, 25% white, and thereabouts, roughly. Again, just mixing the two bundles together. Just trim off the excess, because we don't need that that long. Again, only five inches or so. And again, just laying that down. Shorter to the front, longer to the back. As you can see, each bundle kind of progressively gets shorter as you're going forward. There we go. That's nicely locked. And I'm going to fold this back like so. It's nicely locked down. Just brush it out. That adds you a little bit of color into that body okay a little bit more thread sealer and then a little bit more belly belly bundle again tied 50 50. Go. Now we're going to need a little bit of the turquoise. Okay, not much. This is only probably 10 strands. So there's a red strand in there. Take that out. 
And then I'm going to take a bit of that sapphire blue. And we're going to fold these in half. So two six inch bundles. And just blend them together. Spread that down. Okay, just trim it back down to five inches or so. Actually, probably a little bit less, four and a half inches. There we go. Tying that down. Same as before, folding itself, folding it back on itself. Fiber somehow snuck in there. There we go. Lock that down. A bit of thread. I mean, a bit of golf again. You can see that teardrop taper is going well. Last little bundle of belly stuff. And belly fibers. No, blown it away. So I need to just grab a few more that have escaped. Line them up. Okay, 50-50. Now a bit of turquoise, a um, bit of uh, sapphire blue, and then an even amount of black, kind of 50-50 to darken up that back a bit. Blend them together. There we go. Just gonna push this down and around with my thumb a little bit. Just so it's Spreads like a V across the back, kind of halfway down the sides. Fold it back again. There we go. Now, I'm just going to do a quick tie off there. And the reason being is I might cut my thread when I'm doing it semi trim so i'm just going to give it a little trim there before i put the eyes so i'm just angling my scissors up from the eye of the hook now you can take it out of the vise if you want to do this part it's only a quick shaping of the head getting any unruly fibers out because we are going to put in tab eyes, but I just need to grab my invisible tabs there. So, see in some of the previous videos of the invisible tabs, don't really see it in the camera, but it's basically just a clear vinyl tab that I lay over the flat eyes. There was a video of how to do this at length, kind of a bit of overkill because it is literally as easy as laying them on top of your eyes, peeling them off, so that the tab and the eye are together, and popping it down, two wraps just to lock it down, another 
it to your apps. Make sure they're even. Is that even? No. Which is definitely not even. That should be a bit better. Check it out from the front. Make sure that it looks good. A couple more wraps. Pull back the uh, excess tab. Again, just locks it in place. Tie off. I'm just gonna add that little tag end of the thread. Just have a look there. Is that right? Yeah. Right, now I'm gonna take it out of the vise. Pull all the fibers. Give my fingers. Put it down on your desk. Give it a little brush. And we're just going to have a quick taper of the fly. Again, because we've pre tapered that, it doesn't really need much taper built in. But I do like to just shape the belly a bit more. Shorter the fibres, the, the stiffer they tend to be. So it just helps with a bit of fouling and whatnot. But there we go. That is it. Like I said, a little less than 60 seconds of trimming. That's all you need if you pre-taper. And you don't make the bundles too thick. But that's the, that's the little blue bait fish with a bit of chartreuse in it. And uh, yeah, all that's left to do, which I do in a batch, is Gorilla Glue the eyes, as I said earlier. Gorilla Glue them, um, dome it over the thread, put it into the dry uh, fly dryer or epoxy turner, whatever you want to call it. Leave it for a couple of hours to dry and uh, you're good to go fishing or have a look at the other video i did and um, use uv glue and you're good to go straight away thanks